Welcome to a brand new top 10 places to visit in the Philippines. In my opinion, my name is Finn Snow. I've been based here for the past three years. And I've been traveling quite a bit around the country, well over 150 islands, around 50, 60 provinces as well. So uh, my knowledge is pretty good around which places to visit. So hopefully this video is going to help you decide where to go or perhaps just see my opinion what I think is the most beautiful places in the country. Now Philippines is made up of 7,641 islands I believe but they actually count like uh, if, if there's a small rock sticking out of the ocean let's count them as an island. So uh, uh, it's, it's really hard to go to each and every island in the country but in terms of where I've been I think we covered pretty good distance so uh, hopefully this video will help you or you just want to see my top 10. Note this, all of these top 10 is very accessible to anyone beside maybe one. So if you're interested in some of these clips, you can definitely easily go there if you're planning your holiday here in the Philippines. All right, without further ado, let's jump into it. Number 10, Camp Sur. This spot is amazing for a few facts. It's been called the adrenaline capital of the Philippines, meaning there's wakeboarding park. So if you're into water sports, that's a perfect location. That is tough. As well, there's a bunch of jungles, waterfalls, and beautiful islands to jump around. We were able to go to some of the Survivor TV show spots. So we got to see the obstacle courses and how the uh, tribal council is and all the good stuff from that TV show. So that was very special. Number nine, still on the list, Camiguin. Uh, it gets better every time I visit it. I think I've been there now four or five times, and I believe this is probably one of the best diving locations in the Philippines. So if you're in scuba diving or even free diving now, there's amazing marine life and the ecosystem is just beautiful. It's almost untouched. It's very well preserved. really incredible if you're into that as well beautiful tiny islands to island hopping the white powder sands of white island and now the last trip I went there we we're doing some incredible hikes in this dense rainforest jungle seeing all kinds of insects and wildlife spectacular <music> brand new location into the list finally Boracay the reason I didn't put it in the previous videos is that when I went there it was quite unpleasant for me sort of speaking it was so bad the water that I didn't even go into it it was literally green you could see the algae and sewage coming into it but finally the higher authorities stepped in and took over the island and changed all the bad behaviors of the businesses there and overrun by tourism and now it's a completely different island despite with all the buildings now and the hotels the beaches the water is absolutely crystal clear now if you're coming to the philippines you just want to relax sit back and enjoy your mojito or whatever have a pina colata with the coconut trees around you there is no better spot than Boracay. Boracay is also famous for the magnificent sunset and the uh, sunset cruises so there's a bunch of boats on the water so Boracay is probably the first name you ever hear when you hear about the Philippines. Number of times it's been voted the best island in the world and when you're there you'll see why. Another new name onto the top 10, we got Bohol.
famous for the beautiful chocolate hills and the tarsi ears. One of the cutest animals I've ever seen with the huge eyes and the big hands leaning onto the branches, sleeping during the day time, but they usually hunt that night. So if you're coming to visit them in some of the sanctuaries, please make sure you're not loud or take any photos with flash because during the daytime they're sleeping. In Bohol they have a bunch of powder white sand beaches just like in Baraka. Some places might even be softer and whiter. And nowadays the free diving is uh, booming over there. It's called the free diving capital of the Philippines or if you're into that definitely go to Panglao, Bohol. We got Cebu. Previously I made it up in north and south and uh, for good reasons because there's so much to do in Cebu. If you want to go into the north that's the best place to do the islands and scuba diving. Malapasco is famous for that but Malapasco as well has some powder like you can see the trend here powder white sand in each location. That's how Philippines is. Around Malapascua there's a bunch of other islands. Bantayan is my favorite for sitting back, relax, enjoying the sand. But if you want to down south in Cebu, that's where you find all the waterfalls, the adrenaline jumping down them. And as well, swimming with the sardines in Mobile, where actually I've been uh, staying for the last couple of weeks. One of my favorite places in the Philippines. All in all, I think Cebu for me is the best place to live in the Philippines because it is so cramped up with a lot of things to do in the same area waterfalls, diving, free diving, beaches, the island, it has everything in a small area. So if your time is limited, highly recommend Cebu. Halfway through the list we're at number five, El Nido. There's not many spots in the Philippines that I always like to go back and forth. Now I believe I've been over five times in El Nido and for good reasons. Each and every visit I discover something new. It is packed with islands, lakes and beautiful rock formations. You got this stunning big and small lagoon. Picturistic white sand and the coconuts leaning down into it. This is a perfect place if you want to do island hopping and discover some of the gems in the Philippines. It's also where you see in postcards or advertisements abroad. It's usually from El Nido. If you have a lot of time in the Philippines, I highly recommend putting El Nido on the list, especially if you're backpacking. Number four, we got Siargo, a place that I used to rank number one, but things have changed a little bit since then. In the past three years we can see some insane amount of development going on in the island and things have uh, changed quite a bit. However, that's not going to change the fact how beautiful Siargo is. There's also a really good mixture of foreigners and locals living there so you won't be feeling like you're in Boraca where there's only tourists. In Siargo you will definitely catch the island vibe to the maximum. Bamboos and coconut trees everywhere you go. Hippies, Rasta, surfers, normal backpackers. Everybody goes there. If you go there, make sure you do the three island hopping. There's a couple of lagoons as well. Make sure you check them out. Embracing the island wipes into you and interact with the locals. Try to find a coffee shop and just enjoy the day at your own private place. And for the third spot, we got Balabac, dropped down by one place from a previous one. And this is probably the only one that is really hard to get to, but still there are daily trips going there. So you will always get there, but it might just take a little bit of time. If you're looking for the finest, the whitest, and the most beautiful islands in the Philippines, this is the place. I won't go in detail, but I'll link all the videos down below from my Balabac trip. And it's been quite some time since I was there and hopefully I can revisit very soon. So quickly through Balabac, we will jump right into the second spot, Coron. research about the Philippines you probably heard the name Coron before it has all these magnificent lakes 
hundreds of islands and same with El Nido. I've been there so many times now and there's always something new to discover even if I go on like uh, sometimes I rent a fisherman boat to discover some islands and document them but one of my new favorite things to do there as well they have a marine sanctuary there which uh, protects a very rare animal called the dugong. Now there's only 26 left of them here in the Philippines or in that area and one of them is friendly so if you want to see that it's a very very unique experience but my favorite thing to do in the Coron area as well is the island hopping if you get a chance couple of days definitely do the either big dream boatman expedition or tau expedition and uh, kiloma or something there's a bunch of them so that is my one of my favorite activities in the philippines if you're coming for the first time make sure you do those island expedition because that's how you really get into the real local life of the Filipinos. And finally for the first spot, brand new place, Batanes. There is nothing like this in the Philippines. When you arrive there, you think you're in a different country. Often referred as the New Zealand of the Philippines due to the greeny hills. Wherever you go in Bataan Island, you want to stop and take a picture. Apparently, we can't even make it to the place where we're going to get our breakfast. We're stopping at every single corner. Look at this view. But Batanes is not just one island, it's made out of a couple of them and each one is super different from the another. Now there's stunning scenery everywhere you go, the Marlborough Hills, the volcano in the background, very different beaches such as the Boulder Beach and even blowholes. Now some of my best sunsets I've ever seen in the Philippines is from Batanes. The three main islands that I went to was Saptang and Itbayat. And I tell you what, the Itbayat island is one of the most beautiful islands I've ever seen in my life. Stunning coastal line, all the vegetation that lives on these islands is so different from the rest of the country because it is in a typhoon area, so it gets hit every year. Some plants only growing about a meter tall. In Saptang island, you also witness something very different from the country. There is literally no crime. People keep the doors open, windows open, don't lock their bikes. Zero crime. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know what's cool about that? We're doing some sh photo shooting with the bike over here at this street. And nothing is locked. Everything is open. The bike is unlocked. Like, I feel like... It's such a different feeling from anything in the Philippines. It's another country for sure. That's the feeling you're getting. Oh, guys, um, this place here, it, can, um, it um, makes you realize the lives we have in the cities the struggles, the weather conditions, the isolation, the middle of nowhere, the realization that, you know, uh, how lucky we are. You immerse yourself with the uh, locals and the culture, and uh, you reflect. Weird. <laughs> the feeling. It's, it's more of like respect in you know their lives. It's so simple but tough. There's resilience of the Ivatanis. And when you go there, you, it actually changes you. Like you look at life in a different way because it's so beautiful, and you only imagine that 
You wish the world was just like Batanes. And the Philippines should be proud of any of their magnificent nature and tourist site. I think they should be proudest of Batanes. It is my favorite place in the country. My name is Finn Snow. Please subscribe to the channel for more videos like this coming up. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.